but this month's uh, message is called Life Goals. And uh, when we talk about setting life goals, we've all heard like hashtag life goals, hashtag relationship goals. You know, people put it on there and there's a picture of somebody really happy or somebody with a lot of money or whatever it is. And, you know, so when we talk about setting goals, a lot of times we think, you know, that's the, the, the big time, you know. Uh, but the, the first thing that comes to mind is what you want to do when you're talking about life goals, goals in general. What do I want to achieve? What do I want to do with my life? Wh- how much would I like to weigh? How, how, how much more can I get? How can I gain? How can I uh, move up and move on? And so a lot of times goals are that, like how can I, how can I? Uh, but what we want you guys to kind of get into your hearts and minds today about goals, you know, the most in- inspiring thing about goals, the most attainable type of goals need to be so much more than about us. Just like what can I do? Um, we want to encourage you to ask yourself today, what would make my spouse happier? What would make, uh, help my children succeed in life? Uh, what could be done to glorify God in, in our lives together as a couple? And so your dreams, your goals, your aspirations, they should be bigger than you. And, and I heard a minister say that if you tell somebody about your dream and you tell them about what it is that God has put in your heart, your dream, your vision, they should laugh at you. They should laugh at you because it needs to be something that only God can do. And and so, you know, he was basically saying in a, in a humorous way that if, if you tell them something, they're like, oh, yeah, you could do that. Like, generally speaking, it's probably something that you can do, but you don't need to rely on God for. And so we want your goals to be big. We want them to be godly. And uh, it's got to be something that only God can do and make happen. Amen. Mostly the, the, the idea behind this message, the heart behind this message is the idea that there should be some vision for our marriage, for our lives. You know, a lot of times we start out with big dreams, goals, aspirations. We always think of dreams and goals and things that people uh, aspire to being young. You know, you're starting out, you're, maybe you're going to graduate, maybe you started college, maybe you just got married. And it's like, oh, what do you guys want to do? What are you going to do with your life? What do you, what's your dream? What do you want to do for your career? It's all these uh, lifelong commitments that we kind of look to, uh, to fill you know, what it is we do and kind of give us our title and sense of purpose, uh, you know, and, and a lot of us can relate to that. Uh, you know, we just kind of wanted to give a, a little bit of an example of, of how it is when you first start out, when you get married, how, how much you guys are on the same page and how willing we are to, to be in agreement. Because as a matter of fact, what we want to emphasize is kind of like an Amos 3.3 where it says, how can two walk together unless they agree? Okay, and so in order to agree, you kind of have to be in the same uh, mode. You have to be in the same s- set of mind frame. You have to be agreeing on a direction that you want to head. And it's easy in the beginning. You know, when we get married, we're like, yes, of course. And so we want to kind of give you a little example of that today. On your wedding day, this might be a little bit how it looks. I do. I do too. All right. <laughs> so you want to go on? A, you want to go on a road trip or something? We could, we could go on a road trip. We can do whatever. I do. As long as I'm with you, I'm so happy. Awesome. Yes. <laughs> and then as time goes on, it might sound a little bit more like this. So, hey, you want to you wanna go catch a game with me? Want to go out to the game tonight? Mm, I really don't. I don't even like sports that much. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Babe, I want to quit my job. And join the Army Reserves. I'm not even joking. What? You do? (laughs) And so, eventually, you kind of start to see different things differently. You get different ideas that come up. You get different interests. And and so, in the beginning, where you were like, I do. And then, eventually, it was like, you do. And so, then it kind of turns into a little bit more of a a wider path that you guys... And uh, you might find yourself... Trying to, trying to get back that old fire, that old flame, which could sound like this. So, babe, do you want to, like, do you want to take a little trip, do a vacation? I feel like we never get to see each other anymore. Do you want to do something? Like, remember that time we did that road trip? That was fun. I really don't. I have too much stuff to do. <laughs> I can't even imagine spending that much time in a car with you, for real. Uh, <laughs> yikes. Wow. <laughs> that hurts. <laughs> You know, and, it, and this is kind of a humorous take on it, but a lot of times what happens is in the beginning, you say, I do real quick. It's easy to say, I do. And then you start, you start having a little bit more of a mind of your own and you say, I, I really, I don't. And then it starts to turn into like you do, like you just don't get where they're coming from. And then eventually you're just like, no, I don't. 
<laughs> yeah, so that's something that we're kind of trying to work against. Yes. So how can two walk together unless they're in agreement? Right. You know, at first we were in total agreement. We stood at the altar and we're like, I do. But then as time goes on, you can kind of start going your own way, you know, and then by the end, I'm over here and Sean's way over here. So we have to continually be working at going in agreement in everything. And the whole thing about the Army Reserves, that is no joke. Because when my brother graduated from uh, boot camp for the Army, I was so inspired. This was years ago before we had our daughter. I was so inspired that I really wanted to just drop everything. And I felt like, what if I just go join the Army? I mean, my father was in the Navy. My family's very patriotic. I'm like, what if I just do that? And I came home and I... What if? You were like, I want to. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I came home and I asked Sean, well, Sean was with me, but I said, babe, what do you think if I would do this? And I'll never forget, he was 100% in support of me doing this. If that's what I wanted to do, he was there for me. And if it had been the opposite, I don't think it would have been that easy for me. Like, yes, go ahead, go and fulfill your dreams. I'm here for you, you know, but, but thankfully my father, he was, um, He's always the person I go to for uh, advice, and he was very <laughs> used of God. And he was like, no, Miha, you're going to have children someday. And, you know, I don't think that that's right for you and everything. So, but praise the Lord. But that really did happen. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for Rudy to talk some sense into her. <laughs> <laughs> and this, there's no stopping her once she's got once she got her mind made up. So I figure I'm a better roll with this. But uh you know, that's kind of a, just an example. It was a real life example for us about how agreeing on something it has to be something you get on the same page about. A lot of times it's easy for us to just shut. I, I do it kind of a lot, honestly, when it comes to certain things, she wants to bring up a subject. And if I'm not in the frame of mind or if it's too late or if I just simply don't want to hear it, I'm like, no, 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 no. And I'm just like, shut the book right away. I don't hear her out. <laughs> I don't listen. And I, I might not even give her the time of day. And honestly, we, there's no movement. There's no action. There's nothing that we can move on. And we can't agree on it unless we discuss it, unless we're open to it. There must be a goal to move towards. You guys got to gotta find a goal that you can move towards. To, because if she has a goal and I have a goal, but they're not the same finish line, it's not the same race, it becomes very difficult. And Because you need support. That's what we're here for. We're supposed to support one another. And, of course, the goals have to be something that you can agree on as well. Uh, you know, this requires laying some groundwork. Uh, sharing dreams, sharing goals, aspirations. Uh, we listen to a pastor, uh, Jimmy Evans. He's very um, emphasized on marriage, and he talks about having vision retreat at least once a year. You got to get away together alone for a few days and have fun, enjoy each other, and also take time to to pray, of course, and and spend time with the Lord and talk about what it is your vision is for that next year for marriage, for your life, for your children, whatever it is your career. You discuss all of that stuff, get it out on the table, and then you can figure out how do we get there. You know, you put the practical to it. Um, you know, you take it to prayer, discuss the practical implications of those dreams, those goals. What can we do? What's feasible? What kind of finances are we going to need? What will we need to do or not do? Invest in or cancel subscription to? Uh, you know, commit to or decline? You know, it's not always wrong to say no to things. You just, you have to have a, you have to have a frame of mind. You have to have a calendar. You have to have a time frame. You have to know what your schedule looks like. Don't bog yourself down. Uh, you know, you can't just be a yes man or a yes woman. You know, what we need to do or not do. In all of this, there's, of course, the dreaded word compromise. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> this is a word. This is a word that uh, I, we're familiar with, I think, as married people. Uh, or even if you're just in a ser uh, serious relationship, you know, you find compromise. In the in beginning, it's nothing to you. <laughs> she says, you want to go watch the notebook? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> now... That's compromise because I don't want to go see it, but I do want to be with her and I do want her to be happy. So I compromise my convictions, but, uh, and then I come around to, to the light. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, you know, but compromise is something that it's a word. It's a mindset. It's a thought process, but, and that can lead to, to goal fails because when you think of compromise, you think you're getting the short end of the stick. You think that you're not getting what you want. You think you might even feel like you've been taken advantage of when you compromise because you think, well, they're getting what they want. Yeah, we always compromise for what she wants, for what he wants. But this message is less about reaching your goals through compromise and more about uh, finding that place of agreement, achieving by agreeing. Because anything that I don't agree with her on, she will have a harder time achieving it. 
Uh, had I not been on the same page with her when she decided that she did want to do that with the Army Reserves, it would have been a lot harder. Our relationship would have suffered. We would have struggled in that area, in many areas. So meanwhile, she's all gun ho about something. And, you know, it's inspirational. It's motivational. It's good for her. But yet, if I'm not in agreement, we're going to have, there's going to be a division right there. So there, there's, it's not wasn't so much about compromise. It was about agreement. What can we agree on? There's more to be gained through agreement than there is about compromise. So, and it's more peaceful and satisfying solution. The best way to avoid bitterness in our relationship is going to be making the big decisions uh, more comfortably by agreeing, finding a, a, a common ground, something that you guys can both agree on. And how is it that we do that? We take it to God. We, get, we, we give it to God. He gives the ultimate direction. You just need that confirmation so that you can have peace with one another when you're moving forward. Um, Proverbs 69 says, In his heart, a man plans the course. But the Lord determines his steps. So often we think, well, I've got a good idea, and you just need to come with me. I'm going to drag you with me because this is what God wants, and no, this is what I want. You know, a lot of times we don't ask God what he wants. We don't seek the Lord about those things, and, you know, we can be guilty of that, making decisions, uh, you know, instinctually or just being uh, impetuous and thinking, well, this is a a good opportunity. i got to go. But in everything, I find that um, you have to be in agreement. I knew somebody who who went and took a job, left his job, and went to another job and uh, has never talked to him, his wife about it at all. And I thought that was astounding to me, for me personally. Not because it's like you're subject to your wife, you got to run everything through that filter, but the idea of what things are going to change. How's the schedule going to look? What's the pay like? You know, there's so many variables, and it's easy to just get an agreement if you just pray about it, ask God for direction on it, so that you can reach these goals, whether it be a raise or a a position or a title, or maybe you got future goals you're trying to save money for, but being in agreement on all of it is key to the real success that you want to have. Amen. Amen. And I want to give you um, three scriptures here that are from the word that have to do with desires. And that's what goals are. A goal is a desire that you have and you put a time on it and you put what you need to do to attain that goal. Okay. Psalms 20 verse 4 says, may he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Proverbs 16 3 says, commit to the Lord whatever you do and he will establish your plans. And uh, that reminded me about the testimony of Baron Siobhan um, saying that you had went and uh, worked out at the gym and got everything ready. Um, You committed it to the Lord and he established your plans. That was beautiful. Psalms 37 4 says, Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart amen and um years back we had went to um a conference called the launching and that was in Florida and 12 of us from the church went along with pastors and in that they had a a section where it talked about how the Lord cares for your dreams And that was so astounding because many of us had never really thought of that, that the Lord cares for your desires. He's the one that put the desire in you and he has uh, uh, equipped you to do whatever desire he's put in you. And so we wrote down our dreams and we went and we put them in this little container and we just gave them to the Lord. And so that was very, very touching. My desire in our marriage is have a full blessed life with Sean until we die together old in bed like on the notebook (laughs) or we get raptured together hand in hand. Amen. (laughs) Okay. Since we've been married, I think since I've seen the notebook, I have always spoken that in faith and die together old in bed. Alzheimer's like her. What? And I'm like, no, not that part. (laughs) But that's a desire. Amen. And you know that it was a desire. We were married for 10 years before we had our daughter. That was a desire that was in our heart to have a baby. And after 10 years, you know, we're just like, hey, Lord, if it happens, it happens. If not, I'm happy to be with this man that you give me. But he saw fit to bless us with the baby. Amen. Amen. So whatever goal that you have, stand in faith that he's going to fulfill it speak those things, you know, just stand in faith, whatever goal that you have, the Lord can give you whatever you need. He can equip you to accomplish that goal. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. You know, something that we kind of want to come across with on this lesson is the idea that we all have goals, whether it's just to stay together, just to stay employed. I mean, those are the basics. It's like standard living, but 
in life, we want to live a happy marriage. We want to be blessed. We want to prosper or at least gain some ground. We want to live comfortably. Uh, but there are people who, I mean, they have everything and yet they, they, they don't have a happy marriage. Uh, they don't serve God. They don't know Christ as their savior. You know, those, those things that some people take for granted. I actually heard a a story about a man who, who was one of the wealthiest men who ever lived. And he said, he was quoted as saying, I would give my entire fortune for one good marriage. He had been divorced like three or four times in his life. And he was like, I'd give it all away if I could have one good marriage, one happy marriage. You know, so he he got it. He got the idea that none of this other stuff matters. But when you are in a relationship and when you have that that level of uh, understanding that, hey, I want to achieve things with you. I want to, you know, make a a goal and achieve it, whether it just be uh, a vacation, for example. You know, uh, last year we realized that um, we wanted to take a vacation to celebrate uh, 12 years marriage. Um, So about a year ago, uh, we were looking to October as our vacation time. We wanted to go on a trip. We knew how much it was going to cost. And so we thought about it months out, probably eight, nine months out. And we said, all right, so that was our goal. We set a goal. Okay, vacation. Now, granted, and, and keep in mind, we don't save money very well. Uh, we, we get by. We have what we need. We always can get, you know, those things. We don't suffer. We don't struggle. But as far as a huge savings account, it wasn't something that was a strong suit. And s- all of a sudden, it was like, it became easy because we had a goal we were in agreement and we came up with a plan we made a practical we said hey okay how much do we need to set aside where can we cut costs and we made a a a, a basic real simple just outline of what we needed to do and how we needed to keep each other in check Mm -hmm. like uh, like man i I don't feel like eating at home tonight i want to just get us get it go out to eat you know because it's easy it's 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 comfortable and it's you know convenient but then we'd be like, but the vacation, we could put 20 bucks back. We could put 30 bucks away for that and just eat at home, peanut butter and jelly, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just imagine vacation. So it's always this sort of future uh, thing that you're looking towards, a future satisfaction. You put away some, some immediate satisfaction for future satisfaction. That's how you get to your goals. But you have to be in agreement. You know, because if, if I'm like, babe, we're going to save this money. We're going on vacation. It's going to be awesome. I don't care what you think. You know, and I don't, we don't talk about where we're going to go. We don't talk about where we're going to stay, how much we need to spend or what we want to do when we're there. You know, all those little things that matter to the ultimate goal and enjoying it and, and enjoying the, the travel, the, the way there. You don't want to be miserable all the way up to the day of your vacation. You're like, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Let's go. <laughs> and it's like the whole time you were bickering, fighting, in disagreement, in, in, in division. We need to have that where we stay in agreement with one another. Amen. And the moral of the story, I should say, is that we did go on that vacation. And for us to see that we had saved that amount of money to first the big chunk to buy our plane tickets and then the second chunk to take down for spending money, that was unprecedented for us. We had never done that before. And, you know, the thing that kept us going was looking at pictures online of where we were going to go, where we're going to say what's the room look like all those things it was like the apple in front of the horse you know you're running the whole time and you you have that goal there so praise the lord if those things are going to help you um i heard that um Pastor Joel Osteen, I listen to him all the time. His mother had cancer uh, like 30 years ago, and they only gave her so many months to live. And I guess that she printed up pictures of herself on vacation with her family. She put pictures of, you know, her like horseback riding, all these things. And she put them up all around. And that gave her inspiration to keep on fighting for her life. And 30 some years later, she's still alive. Praise God. She's been healed totally of the cancer. But it's like those things, you know, making goals, um, making it real printing up pictures, doing stuff like that. So whenever you have a goal, say you want to purchase a home, you know, just give yourself motivations, you know, put yourself up some hashtags, (laughs) goals, you know, stuff like that. That's going to help you. Amen. Yeah. And once you, once you work towards even a small goal, let's say just a small goal, for example, at the beginning of the year, uh, we were like, man, you know, we want to get healthy. We want to go to the gym, but we, we'd always say, uh, for example, well, what are we going to do with the baby? You know, things like that. And finally, we were like, you know what? We really want to. We had the desire. We were in agreement about it. Uh, we were ready to invest in it. You know, it's something that you have to invest in. Anything that you want to achieve, you have to invest in, whether it's time, finances, whatever it is. And so we were like, okay, well, you know, the YMCA, they got child care. So we could do that because then we can work out. So it was all these little details that we had to tie together and then be in agreement on and then sort of be like, all right, well, how are we going to afford <laughs> a membership? That kind of thing. And then it's like, okay, uh, who feels like actually going? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... Do I? Do you? No? Okay. You know, generally one of us will at least encourage the other one, you know, like, 
get off the couch <laughs> sort of thing and 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 so but slowly but surely you know we see the results it's it's a work in progress anything you work towards it's a work in progress those goals uh they you know it, it's like she shared that example you vision it you have to have vision the bible tells us that without vision the people perish or for lack of vision they suffer they struggle uh other uh, versions say and so we share that to say this you know if you don't have vision in your marriage if there's nothing you're working together towards it's very easy to drift apart you know i'm not saying you just pick old you know throw a dart at a dartboard and pick a thing uh you know find something that's going to bring you joy bring you satisfaction that's going to honor god but we have to work together on it because, you know, if my goal is this and her goal is that and we can't line up our schedules and we can't line up our uh, things and, and I can't support her thing and she can't support mine, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not really a great goal and it's, I, I, odds are it's not a godly goal. You know, so we had to remind each other, encourage each other, uh, you know, s- sort of th- those sort of things help you get to the finish line of those goals. And like with the vacation example, when we finally did that, we saw what we were able to achieve like that. It encourages you all the more. I'm like, hey, we could do that again next year. It was easy. You know, by the end, once you get there, you're like, it. we already did it. We could do it again. We could even do it more. We could save more next time. We could go here. We could go there. And so it encourages you to reach that next goal and to work together. It's like, wow, you know, you, you thank you for helping me on that. Thank you for helping me save. Thank you for reminding me what it is that we wanted to do in the long term. Amen. Amen. And like Sean was saying about the uh, us working out, you know, encouraging each other is a big part of it because, you know, I've we've been going to the Y since like March and I've I'm not going to say how much I've lost, <laughs> how much I've gained. None of that. You know, if I tell someone like I've gained five pounds, they're like, oh, it's all muscle, girl. You've been gaining muscle. I'm like, mm, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> but praise the Lord for my wonderful husband. He'll be like, oh, babe, you look like you've been losing weight. Praise God, this and that. And I'm like, let's go to the gym tomorrow. Let's keep this going. <laughs> so keep encouraging each other. Amen. <laughs> mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and I'm and I'm serious. It's, it, that's the thing, though. You have to take notice. You have to take stock of what it is that you're looking for to do. You know, if it is saving money, if it is uh, getting a job, you know, it's like you have to apply. If it's, you know, having children, you got to put in the work. And that's a fun part. But, you know, it's like the things that we want to achieve together. You have to make a plan. Make want a strong marriage. You know, we always encourage people make a date night. You have to have a date night. You have to invest in it. It costs, but you put money aside for things that matter. You know, we always are like, well, we know this bill is coming. We know that bill is coming. Some of them are luxuries. Some of them are necessities. You know, if 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 we really think about it, we don't need cable, but it's like, well, it comes in handy for this and and for that, and it's nice. It's convenient for this, and and so you set aside. You make room for things that matter most. So if it's a desire of yours, if it's a goal of yours that you want to achieve, you are able to do that. But don't do it alone. Don't do something that is going to cause friction between you and your spouse. We want to work at it together. And all the more so will we be successful if we do that, if we find ourselves creating those kind of goals. If, if, if your goal is a simple thing like, well, man, I, we don't even have a date night set apart. We don't even have, you know, this or that. We don't have the certain comforts that I'd like to have, Uh, you know, it's something that you can talk to each other about it. Say, this is what I really want. That's what we were saying earlier about sharing your dreams, laying that groundwork, be like, just put your cards on the table. Like, this is what I'd really like to do. And then they can say, well, I mean, okay, I see what you're saying there. I mean, I don't know where you want to start from there, but at least we know what it is that the other one wants. Uh, A good example of that is uh, last time we we spoke at the marriage builders, my wife and I were talking about um, how can we encourage one another? How can we do this and that? And she told me, and I don't know if this is okay to share, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she she said someday in our lives, because we really enjoy watching, we really enjoyed watching the Olympics this year. Oh. And uh, I know that in like, there, there there's a chance that they're going to be in California some in the next, say, 10 to 20 years, uh, because they're every four years. And she had told me, she had confided in me, she said, you know, I would love to go in person someday before we die. And I was like, in the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> 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 to run against Usain Bolt. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but to, to just go to to attend something fun, something exciting, something that we could look forward to, kind of like a trip. And I was like, you know what, babe? OK. I was like, that's a thing we can do. You know, if they come to America, <laughs> I'm not going to Tokyo, but, you know, <laughs> but you know, it sounds wild. It sounds huge. But I didn't I didn't second guess it. I was like, OK, that's a thing that that's a desire of your heart. We can make that happen. Amen. I mean, why not? Why not? Is it really that difficult? Is it really impossible? No. Are there some hurdles to come across? Of course there are. You, you got to save. You got you to gotta dig your heels in and, and think, okay, what's that going to look like? What's it going to take? 
but you know and then that's off in the future so you have to remind yourself you have to encourage each other like hey we're still going to do that we're still going to be there we're going to get there and so whatever it is whatever goals you guys set and that's the thing you must set some goals even if they're simple even if they're short term even if they're maybe they're kind of easier they seem basic but at the same time you work together on it you achieve it and you be realize hey we're able to do so much more together mm -hmm. amen amen Amen. I, I do have some crazy goals that only God can help me achieve. But I want to be on The Price is Right someday. <laughs> That's a goal that I have. I love that show. I just I think that I'm going to be on there someday. So just keep stay tuned. OK, <laughs> yes, I'm going to win the car. I'm going to win the twenty five thousand dollars. All of it. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> That's right. I'm going to play Plinko. You know it. <laughs> All right. So um, a goal also that uh, is dear to my heart is to be married for all the milestones, okay? I have three clients that I do their hair that this year they achieved 50 years with their spouse. So it just showed me, you know, um, it's good to surround yourself with godly people who are going to lead you in the way of a happy marriage. You're gonna, they're going to uh, show you different secrets, amen? So I talked to my one client that her and her husband celebrated 50 years this year. And I asked her, you know, what would you recommend me to share with these people that are uh, in the marriage group? And this is what she wanted me to share. That marriage is a lifetime covenant. It's not a contract. It's a covenant with the Lord. Look for someone you can really like as a person. Enjoy their company. Be forgiving and choose to be loving. Even the most loving spouse is still imperfect. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. No matter how fine they are, only God can fill the innermost part of our heart, which is so true. We cannot find our happiness solely in our spouse. Our happiness has to come from the Lord. Amen. And coasting along in a marriage means it will eventually come to a stop. So we have to put in the effort and make it prosper. Amen. We can't just be coasting along. That's not going to work. So that was a blessing. And man, that, that she wanted to share those things with you. Uh, make it a point to spend time with godly couples and to follow their example. Because when I see their pictures on Facebook, you know, each one of them have their 50 years. I'm like, goals. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. You know, and, and everybody has different goals like we shared. Maybe maybe your goal isn't to be the most successful CEO of a company. Maybe you just want to get by. Maybe you just want to raise your family right and, and, and stay in church. And that's good. Maybe maybe your goal is to have that date night. Maybe your goal is to celebrate 50 years of marriage. I hope it is. I hope it's to celebrate a lot longer. And so but the idea is that it's setting goals like we shared earlier without vision. Uh, the people perish, but we also need to make the vision plain. We have to make it so that it's achievable, make it so that's understandable. If I tell her, well, I want to do this and I want to do that. And it's all complicated and she doesn't understand somehow how some of the parts work and, or how we're going to get there. And I can't seem to explain it right. It's going to be a lot harder to get her on board with me. So we need to be able to make the vision plain, what it is that we want to do, how we can do it and how it affects each other and how we can do it together. Really. We want to be there for each other. We want to set this goal and be like, I need you to support me 100% no matter what. You know, it, it doesn't always work that way. We can't expect that out of our spouse just because it's something that's so strong in us. We needs to be achievable together. You know, goal setting is the key to success in every area of our lives. It's proven that if you don't have clear goals, there are no little to no results. You know, if you don't set a plan in motion, you won't get anywhere. You won't go anywhere. And like the, like her client was saying that, you know, if, if your marriage is coasting, it's just like a car. If it's coasting, eventually it will come to a stop. You have to keep, you have to put the effort in. You got to fuel it up. You got to keep it, you know, uh, running tip top. And so, you know, relationship goals, uh, future goals, those sort of things. But the ultimate goal, the ultimate goal of marriage ought to be to honor and glorify God. The Bible says, let marriage be held in honor among all. And so no matter how much money you make or, or how successful you come, or maybe you've had goals before you say, I've had goals and we just didn't make it. We couldn't do it. The kids came along or, uh, you know, the economy was bad or we just didn't see eye to eye. And, and so you get discouraged about sort of working together and you say, I can't I just can't work with them. They don't they don't get it. They don't understand. And, and it's like we have to honor God first. Our marriage comes first. You know, the most uh, the wonderful thing you can do for your kids is to have a good marriage, a healthy marriage. Uh, the best thing you can do for your home is to be there and to spend time. Uh, you know, I, I know people who have two, three jobs and they're never home and they're providing, they're providing, but it, that's pretty much where it stops. And so we need to have goals. Like I said in the beginning, 
that aren't just like, I want to do this and I want to do that. It needs to be something bigger than ourselves, something that we can work towards together and gather other people around and inspire and encourage them. Amen. Something that honors and glorifies God. Because no, again, no matter how much money you make, how successful you come, what your title is, if your marriage does not reflect the love of God and the peace and the joy that comes from serving the Lord together, it has not succeeded as you might have hoped. If your spouse and children are not drawn closer to Christ uh, through the example that you set, then the words you speak, uh, you know, the, the things you do, the actions, the examples you set, then you're not, you're not succeeding at the whole goal, the big picture. But be encouraged. You can always adjust. You can always reframe. You can get back on track and you can reach your dreams. 